All right, good afternoon. Save the best for last, as always. So, don't have a whole lot to go over. Um, as far as the legislative update, um, we are um, going to need to have to change our private applicator regulations a bit uh, due to EPA's certification and training rule. It's a new rule that goes into effect on May 22nd of this year. However, it won't affect anybody in this room for at least five years because um, they've given us five years to, to get our stuff together on what we have to do to comply with the rule ourselves. Um, but one of the main things we're looking at doing or that we're going to have to do is, is um, private applicators currently um, can be 16 years of age. Um, they will now have to be 18 in order to apply a restricted use pesticide. Um, there are going to be some exemptions for, for uh, uh, immediate family. Um, and EPA has redefined immediate family, so it, it encompasses a lot more of your family members. But um, so it might not affect as many people as we think, but um, but it is something to, to, that um, we are going to have to change in the regs. Um, also, with that certification and training rule. Um, we are actually looking at changing our regs to to um, basically restrict the application of RUPs to certified applicators only. Um, it is something we are looking at. Uh, a lot of the other states do do that. Um, currently in Maryland, you can, you can apply a restricted use pesticide under the supervision of a certified applicator. Um, but, but with the new C&T rule that's going into effect, the certification training rule, um, it might just be easier for us to just require everyone to be certified um, because you're going to have to go, th regardless, you will have to go through training every year anyway um, in order to, to continue to apply a restricted use product. Um, and we're restricted use pesticide. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I've been with the state too long. Everything's an acronym now. Um, so, and, and one thing that we are looking into, um, this has come up this year, we've had some issues down in Dorchester County that is, has, has brought this to light. And um, drift in our regulations, we don't really actually have a definition of drift. Um, everyone pretty much knows what it is. Um, but we are actually looking at defining drift. And currently our regs, um, basically our regs, there are, it's zero drift. So. Um, once that product leaves the site of application, you are in violation of our regulations. Um, we are looking to make some adjustments to that. How we're going to do that, I'm not sure. Um, but as you know, uh, well, as you'll see in some later slides, uh, drift is our, our, our number one complaint um, on the ag side. Um, not just the ag side, turf and ornamental as well. And um, so we need to do something to, um, that, that's fair to everybody. Because um, right now, if I find one part per billion of, a pro of, of something on your neighbor's property, technically you are in violation of our regulations. One part per billion, um, it's not a lot. I mean, that can actually, you, you could have driven through your field and, carry, and a dust particle could have fallen on that field days ago. Um, it could have been from an application a year ago. Um, so we're trying to work on that and, and we'll get everybody involved with that too because I'll come up with something and you all will laugh at me and then we'll try to sit down and figure it out. But um, we are going to do that soon. Um, this is the uh, main bill that's affecting us. This is the only one that's been submitted to date. Uh, doesn't mean it will be the only one we see. But basically uh, the legislature is looking at banning chlorpyrifos, period. So no more use at all. Um, so. I don't know how many people in here use that still. Um, it, when we did our last use survey, we only used um, 3,904 pounds. Um, that was back in 2014 when we did our last survey. So I don't know how much is still used. I know it, it has a use. Lore's ban. Um, <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. So. Um, but anyway, it's, there, there's no exemptions. It, that this is what's being, being um, thrown out there. So they are looking at making this a, 
a complete and out-and-out -out ban in the state of Maryland. But they haven't decided yet. I know they had a... They had a hearing back on the 7th or something like that. Um, so, I, and I haven't heard if they're doing a second one or, and, and I haven't been to the web page yesterday. I didn't see any, any kind of follow-up on that hearing, so. And this was passed about two years ago, I believe. Um, I have it up here. It really isn't going to affect anyone or shouldn't affect anyone in this room. But I've been getting a lot of phone calls on this from, from both growers, uh, commercial applicators, uh, Mr. Lowe's and Home Depot. And, um, but um, basically, everyone's calling it a ban, a ban, a ban. Um, uh, the neonics, the metacloprid, and, and, and all the other uh, I think there's seven or eight of them in, in that class, um, have not been banned in the state. Um, the use has been prohibited, so um, they can only be used by certified applicators or someone under their supervision. This does not apply to ag, so ag can still use this product. Um, you will only be able to purchase this product at a restricted use pesticide dealer. So any any of the the, um, the dealers, anybody you normally would purchase a lot of your products from are probably dealers with with us. Um, but you can't. That's the only place you are technically allowed to buy this anymore. That's the only place in Maryland that can sell it. Um, so we've been through Home Depot and Lowe's and all the mom and pop hardware stores, and it is everywhere. So apparently no one got the word. Um, <laughs> but. Um, but the kicker is, if it's labeled for indoor use, if it has an indoor and out, a lot of, a lot of the products, um, like tree and shrub care from Bear, has indoor, and it, there may be an uh, out, it's an outdoor, but there may be an indoor. I think there's a, um, I forget the name of the product, um, but, it's, but it's an indoor, outdoor use product. So as long as it's labeled for indoor, those hardware stores can still sell it. Um, now, as a homeowner or an uncertified individual, you can't go there and you can buy it because it's still not restricted. So you can buy it, you just can't use it outside. You'll have to use it inside. Um, pet care products are exempt. Uh, personal care products, so lice, bed bugs um, on your person, they're exempt. Um, they did put some pretty hefty penalties on it. <laughs> so, I mean, the first penalty is $250 flat out. After that, it's, it's $500 and or 60, uh, 90 days in jail, and then the third one is $1,000 and or a year imprisonment. Um, so they've got some hefty penalties on it, and um, we're trying to get the word out, and we'll see what happens with this, but it's, it's probably, um, it's gonna be a tough one for us to enforce. Um, but again, it shouldn't affect, affect you all as, as certified applicators. You'd be able to purchase it. You can, Technically, just only purchase it from your dealer. So, quick overview of what we did last year. We've got uh, 4,700 certified applicators, um, 300 certified in, in Cat 1, which is our ag category, commercial ag category, and then we've got a little over 3,300 private applicators. Um, as a commercial business, that business needs to register each one of its employees, so we have 8,600 8, registered employees um, with all of our commercial pesticide businesses. Um, manuals, uh, this is primary commercial. We can skip right over that. Um, there are some online recertification courses. You're here. Obviously, this won't, uh, this, it doesn't matter for you, but um, if, if you, you miss a meeting or you've got a neighbor that missed a meeting or a family member that missed a meeting for whatever reason, um, there are some online courses that they can take to get their recertification um, renewed or to get their recertification credit and get their renewal. Um, the online renewal system is up. It's running. I think most of the bugs have been worked out of it. Now we've been working with this for three years. Um, do not throw that postcard away. We know you know, I know where our mail usually ends up because it always comes here right at the busiest time of the year because, you know, God forbid we mail it in the wintertime. But that postcard will have all the information you need to get online and, and to, to get yourself straight. So it's, um, you're going to have your license, the license number as well as a, a renewal code on there um, that you'll have to punch into the system to access your personal information so that way you can Go ahead and renew online. You can pay online. You can print your 
you can print your certificate right there. You can still mail it in if you'd like to. I was going to ask you, is there a backup system? <laughs> I've never gotten it to work. <laughs> Yeah, you can still you can still mail it in. Um, you can call the office, and and any one of us will be able. To, well, not me. I, I can't walk. I can't walk you through it. But any one of them. I have a phone number on that card. I've run into that little situation. Really? Yes. They do not. I'll let them know. Contact information online. Yeah, it's it's our main True. it's it's our main number. Really. And mine didn't have a, had the, the the code number on the back. I didn't have that. No, all that info's there. It was all mine. No, it wasn't all mine. It really? Was mine. I got mine last year. I brought I my card with me if you want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got this postcard? Yeah. Right huh? This postcard. I got yeah. one in 2016. Not your certificate. You brought the postcard yeah. with yeah. you. So it doesn't have all the information on there. Know. I got okay. mine in 2016 and I didn't get any of that. All right. I'll let the ladies know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but I can honestly tell you, I've never been on the online system. So, I'm, you know, it's, it's going to be blind leading the blind on this one. Um, so, but anyway. Okay, so not all the bugs are worked out, but we'll work on that. Uh, and I apologize, but um, um, we do have some video tutorials online um, to go through your renewal process. This was actually done with, I think, Carroll County Extension. Um, so if you, if you, it's on our website um, to go through that, that. Of course, it's not going to help you if you don't have your code numbers on the back of the card anyway. But um, we do have that online. and. Uh, to take a look at. So one other thing we are doing, um, we've been pretty lax on this, um, and it won't be it won't be this year, and it probably won't be next year. But <laughs> please remember, in order to get your credits, you're going to need your your certificate number when you um, sign that sheet that Mike passed around. Um, we're no longer going to be doing social security numbers. Um, I think we're finally moving into the, at least the 20th century, or trying to, um, at our, in our section. And um, what we're actually going to do is, is uh, we're looking to do what some of the other states have done too, is um, you will probably at some point within the next few years all be issued new certification cards with a, with a barcode on the back that we can scan. And we're going to scan you in when you come to these meetings. Um, and. Um, and that's how you'll get your certification, your recertification credits. Um, we'll be able to track it better that way. Um, it's not a big issue with private applicator meetings, but with our commercial applicator meetings, we get a lot of people signing other people in. So, um, and part of the new EPA certification and training rule is somehow we are going to have to be able to positively ID every single person that comes into a meeting. So again, the smaller private applicator meetings that the same people have been year after year after year, it's a little easier. But the big commercial meetings, um, you know, we don't know who these people are. So um, rather than asking for a license, driver's licenses or some other form of ID, we're, we're going to go to a scan, scan code method. So uh, we do have a new inspector uh, up there in Anne Arundel County. Uh, Kelly Love started with us and over on the Eastern Shore uh, from Kent. Ken on South is uh, David Parks. Um, anybody who had dealt on the shore dealt with PD Council. He did retire back in September. Uh, David has taken over for him. He's hit the ground running. Um, Kelly just started with us back in December. Uh, she's covering uh, Southern, Southern Maryland and um, Anne Arundel, Calvert, and St. Mary's counties. Um, everybody else is pretty much the same. Uh, Inspector Yapa and, and Glenn Kraup, Bray, Russ Nortel were all covering the same territory as they have been for years. So again, one of the things that our inspectors do, um, you guys probably don't see them a whole lot, is the routine business inspections. So we did about 552 inspections last year. Again, application records are a big deal. It's a big deal on the private side too. Um, whenever we get involved with a complaint investigation with a, with a private app where a private applicators involved. Um, records have 
have been a problem. Um, they've been a problem for the person issuing a complaint, and they've been a problem for the person who the complaint was issued against. Um, and believe it or not, we've been to a couple places this year where the records are right here. I got them right here. I know exactly what I applied, which is fine. I don't care. Write it down. If you can write down everything you've done for the last two years, you're golden. So, <laughs> um, but again, keep those records. Uh, I know Extension has, has a ton of, ton of forms that you can use. We've got forms you can use um, that will meet our, our minimum requirements. Um, there's online uh, stuff online you can do. Um, everybody's got a smartphone anymore, most everyone. Um, you know, you can carry that with you and, and um, that way you have it. Um, so complaint investigations, ag complaints were up this year. We had um, 12. Uh, we only had six last year, so we had 12, 12 this year. And we had, a, had five of which were on private applicators. So I think we only had one private applicator complaint in 2016. 2017 we had five. Um, again, we had five commercial aerial, all from the same person in Dorchester County. And we had um, two commercial ground applications. Um, we still have three pending. Uh, this slide wasn't updated, but we still have, we, uh, the, red, the red is violations. Uh, we issued three violations, three, three confirmed violations. One was an actual on a private applicator, was one on, it was an unauthorized application. He actually um, uh, took it upon himself to spray the entire county road, the dirt road, because the county didn't come and take care of the weeds, um, which would have been fine if he asked the county first and the county said okay, but um, they didn't. And um, so we do have an unauthorized application there, and then we did issue a letter of caution to a, uh, another, or notice a warning to another private applicator for drift. Um, got some germoxone on some wheat. And um, we issued a civil penalty uh, to a commercial applicator uh, for failing to follow the label. Uh, the label required that, that commercial applicator to do a jar test and to clean the filters prior to making his application um, from field to field. He did not do a jar test and he did not clean his filters and the result was about 80 acres. He claims it was 700 acres but it came to about 80 acres of soybeans that were wiped out. Um, so we have two that are still pending so that's five. So we have seven that uh, we issued no violation, they were unconfirmed. Um, State Highway has been calling us a lot again, uh, so is some, so some of the counties, uh, Talbot County has been big on, on giving us a call. Um, just watch the right of ways. Um, they've, State Highway especially has, has been um, keeping an eye on their right of ways, uh, know, know where their right of way starts and um, try, to, try to stay off of it if you can as far as any burn downs or, or anything like that. Um, because that is their road right away. They're trying to keep it clean. They've got to, they've got to work with a TMDL that's required um, under law. So they are asking, asking us to just remind everybody. Um, I don't, we've seen some of this with private applicators, but um, it's mostly, mostly on the commercial side, but just keep it in the back of your mind. Um, Dicamba, um, has anybody here grown anything, uh, grown any soybeans? You, you don't count. <laughs> you did? <laughs> you doing dicamba beans by chance? Are you going to admit it? This year. This year you're doing some? So, so everybody's going to have to go through training. EPA's, the, um, I'm sure you heard of all about the dicamba issues. A uh, man was shot in Arkansas over it. Uh, Arkansas actually had 864 complaints total. Um, the, apparently the, the soybean guys and the cotton guys really don't get along. And, um, and someone was shot um, for, for wiping out another field. So um, dicamba, period, no matter what the formulation is, banned in Arkansas. Um, we have not had any official complaints reported to us in Maryland last year. 
Um, but there have been some, some label enhancements that EPA has made. Um, it, all dicamba products will be restricted use now. Um, anyone who's applying dicamba um, resistance, uh, anybody who's replying dicamba to the soybean um, crop, the resistant soybeans, will have to go through a yearly training in addition to your regular pesticide training. It's, it's an additional training. Um, as far as I know, um, some of it might be available online that you can do. It's actually pretty quick training, um, but you need to keep uh, records of when you went to the training and, and uh, so that way you can prove you've gone if anything does happen. So we did 33 tons of plastic last year, so if any of you guys have participated, thank you very much. Um, I can tell you on the shore, we're in uh, Chestertown, we're over in Easton, we're down in Salisbury. Oh, we've got about 20 additional private sites, so if any of you guys are buying stuff from Willards or Southern States, um, we, work with, we work with those folks. Uh, maybe they'll take some of your containers. Um, on the, uh, in uh, Western Maryland, uh, we're out in Frederick. Um, and then we're down in, um, God, I forgot where we're at. We're out in Washington County, uh, out in uh, Martin's Elevator. We're um, in Frederick County at the landfill. And um, we just picked up a new site in Montgomery County this year. Um, so um, thank you for any of you who have participated. We, uh, we've done over a million pounds um, since the program started. Uh, so we're, we're pretty happy about that. It is free. All we ask is that you just rinse your containers out when you bring them over. That's all I've got. Um, WPS, you want me to hit on that real quick? <laughs> so, um, I don't have a whole lot to say. A lot of things have been, dates have been pushed around um, when the new administration came in last year. The, the, um, the new date, it was January 1st, 2018, so that's passed. Um, I can tell you this, the main, the main changes that, that you'll probably feel are, are the training of any workers. Workers and handlers now must be trained immediately. Um, there's no grace, well there's no grace period for handlers. Workers had a grace period, but they have to be trained immediately now before they start any task. Um, it, it was once every five years, they have to be trained every year. Um, if your handler, if, if you're using a, um, if you've got an employee using a, a a restricted use product or a product that contains a skull and cross bones, they're going to need a, or requires a respirator, they are going to have to have a respirator fit test. Um, you, can, you, you can buy a kit. I think Gemplers may sell a kit or Northern Tool may sell kits. You can actually do it yourself. Um, some of the Minute Clinics actually will do it for you too because they got to go through, they still have to, not just a fit test, but they got to go through the medical eval. I can tell you right now, and, and EPA is very aware of this. In Maryland, if you see us come out and do a WPS inspection, we will be doing a compliance inspection only, um, unless it is complaint driven. Uh, so if we just happen to come on by or give you, we don't happen to come on by, we're gonna call you. If we call you and ask to do a, a worker safety inspection, number one, we're not gonna pick the busiest time of year and, and number two, it is going to be compliance only, just to get you on on uh, par with the new the new regulations, because there are there are some pretty decent changes. So that's all I got.